one star against a more distant star. It does so from opposite positions in Earth's orbit of the Sun. The accuracy of Hipparchos is like measuring a golf ball on the Empire State Building from the other side of the world. Hipparchos proves that certain stars are 10% farther away than we thought, making the universe between 13 and 15 billion years old. Hipparchos finds that globular clusters are also farther away, making their stars younger at between 12 and 13 billion years old. The older the universe, the slower it expands. So could it stop and reverse? Maybe, but one theory suggests the expansion of the universe will go on and on, till, like a firework, momentum runs out. The universe will be dispersed, bleak and lonely. The theory of the Big Crunch is more dramatic. When expansion is exhausted, the universe teeters and reverses. It could only happen if there's enough matter in the universe. Matter creates gravity. Only gravity can orchestrate such a terminal crunch. There may be enough matter, for 90% of the universe is thought to be invisible. has ever seen a black hole, for nothing, not even light, escapes such gravity. Like black holes, 90% of the universe is invisible. Astronomers call it dark matter. This hidden mass is undetectable at any wavelength, from gamma rays to radio. With nine-tenths of the picture obscured, our ideas of the universe could be quite wrong. Dark matter may be largely responsible for the development and structure of the universe. The problem is, most of that structure is invisible. Two stars orbit a common center of mass. They have a mutual gravitational attraction. We don't see the gravity, but we see its effects. The gravity of dark matter affects the rotation of this galaxy. Its spin is measured by the colors of the Doppler effect. Results show that outer parts of the galaxy spin much faster than its visible matter justifies. The cause is dark matter, probably a hidden halo of up to 10 times the visible mass accelerates the galaxy. But dark matter shouldn't be confused with the dark clouds that pepper this galaxy. They're just visible dust. The matter we see tugs invisibly on these stars. And it hints at a presence in these clusters of galaxies. Their interactions suggest up to a hundred times more matter than we see. But what is dark matter? Is it dead stars, or failed stars, or black holes, or is it exotic subatomic particles? This is the visible cosmos as we know it. The nature of dark matter and its part in shaping our universe remain two of the greatest mysteries in cosmology. A superstar draws matter from its smaller partner. The big star dies in a supernova, but the partner survives, still orbiting, still losing matter. For the superstar is now a black hole, 
In the real cosmos, we'd see the surviving star apparently orbiting an empty space. It's a clue used by astronomers to detect black holes. This is another. Although invisible itself, a black hole distorts light and space at its rim. Approach too close and you're spaghettified. A black hole is a collapsed star of such density, such gravity, that from within the rim, nothing escapes. To form a black hole, the core of the exploded star must be at least three times the mass of the sun. But imagine Earth as a black hole. The mass of our planet is compressed to just three-tenths of an inch. It's so dense that light cannot escape, and nothing travels faster than light. light can be bent, and it helps us find dark matter. Here, light from a distant quasar travels to Earth. Put a big object in the way, and our picture distorts. The object might be a galaxy with lots of dark matter and enormous gravitational pull. That gravity creates a crazy lens. It tugs on the light of the quasar, bending and multiplying its image. The picture we get on Earth is four images of the quasar, with the lensing galaxy at the center. The degree of light bending reveals the amount of dark matter in the galaxy. When the lensing object is less symmetrical, it smears light. The blue arcs are far-off galaxies, distorted by the cluster in the foreground. But the principle's the same. Gravitational lensing enables scientists to weigh dark matter. In the Milky Way, shrouded by the stars that crowd our galactic center, is a ring of gas. It has the mass of 30,000 suns. To many astronomers, such a swirl is evidence of only one thing the pull of a massive black hole, a throat at our galactic center that swallowed a million suns. Galactic collision is thought to spawn supermassive black holes. Like celestial dancers, two galaxies merge. A supermassive black hole is formed when the galactic cores unite. This is Centaurus A, the marriage of two galaxies, a white one shaped like a basketball and a dark one that we see edge on. At their single heart is a supermassive black hole. It has a thousand times the mass of that hole in the Milky Way. And here's another just as big. A supermassive black hole is surrounded by an accretion disk. Subject to irresistible gravity, matter swirls inward. Some matter jets at right angles to the disk, saved at the brink by the shock wave around the central vortex. Every hour, the equivalent of four Earths